for years, she's been the voice of a fan favorite Mandalorian, and now she's playing the live action version of the character she originated, Bo-Katan. And we learned this morning, heck yeah, that she is returning for the third season of The Mandalorian. Please welcome Katie Sackhoff. brought my phone here, so I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I'll just hide it there. <laughs> so Katie, welcome, welcome to Celebration. Welcome back to Star Wars. I mean, now that you've, you know, brought Bo-Katan to life in animation and in, and in live action, I mean, this character has had such an amazing journey. Can you tell me what it was like in those initial meetings when you learned that you were going to be taking this animated character and bringing her to life? Absolutely. I mean, come on, lucky girl, right? I know. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> um, I remember Celebration 2018 in Chicago. I cornered, yeah, I cornered Dave Filoni. <laughs> and I said, so I hear about this show, Mandalorian. And my character's not dead. So, um, how good of friends are we? <laughs> Um, he said it was already in the works, but I like to think that I had some sway. And um, so that was what, you know, came to fruition that, uh, in Chicago. However, I didn't believe anything was actually going to happen. And I, I got a phone call that Jon Favreau wanted to sit down with me. So I looked at my husband and I was like, what? What? Who? Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> so I go in. And I'm sitting there, it takes me, y'all, it takes me 20 minutes to figure out that my face is already on the wall as this character. It took me so long to realize that he was asking me if I wanted to be in the show. And I remember almost diving over the table, being like, are you kidding? I think an expletive came out of my mouth. Of course. I was course. like, of course I'll do it. Are you crazy? <laughs> So yeah. what was it like bringing a character that you originated in animation to life? I mean, has it, did it change your performance for Bo-Katan Bo at all, or? It did, absolutely. You know, it, I showed up on my first day when I put on, when I finally put on my wardrobe. It was my cool. makeup test. Cool. Dave was there. We might have shed a few tears. And it was just so strange to see her in live action. You know, we, we spent so much time making sure that her freckles were right and that her scar was on her face and that she had her eyebrows just perfect, that I never stopped to ask how she actually moved. Because I'd been playing the character for so long, it never occurred to me that I haven't actually been playing the character. And so all of a sudden, like a couple days before we go to shoot, I'm having to question how to move my face as Bo-Katan. <laughs> which God, I'd no, never no. thought of, and I felt so unprepared. But Bryce Dallas Howard held my hand all the way through it. Amazing, right? Amazing, amazing director. Yeah. She's so, oh, if I could, I would follow that woman anywhere. I mean, and that's just the, the strength of this show. I mean, everyone that is involved in it is really just such a huge fan, and they have such deep love for the character. I'm sure it's just kind of like, once you got out there, it was like, oh, this is the most natural thing in the world for me. <laughs> you think so, huh? It seems like it. <laughs> um, you, you know, I think that I know her backstory at this point. I know it very well. Um, and she does sort of feel like a piece of me at this point. Although I do feel like I do have to fight Dave Filoni's wife for it. Because uh, she is based off of her. So. Yes, Anne's here somewhere. Anne is here. <laughs> um, and I saw her scowl today, and it is definitely oh, Bo-Katan's scowl. It's so good, Let's guys. Let's be honest. It's it really, really is. intimidating. Yeah. I love, I love her. Yeah. So what is it about Bo-Katan that you think has resonated so deeply with fans over the years? You know, first of all, I think that Bo is just a phenomenally cool character. Yeah. Um, right? She really is, yeah. Super cool. She's also deeply flawed. And I think that people have enjoyed watching her 
grow and change and evolve as a character, and she hasn't stayed stagnant. She's learning her lessons. She's figuring out the mistakes that she made, she's made. She's potentially, you know, she's paid the price for a lot of mistakes, and she's having to deal with that. And I think that fans can, can resonate with that, that sort of like growth and that guilt and that making mistakes and, and, and trying to um, atone. Yeah, she's a very complex character. Yeah. Now, when you come out here to celebration, this is like the best family reunion in the <laughs> world, and you're no stranger to the convention circuit. What is it, what's so special about coming to this event for you? You know, this is so different. I've been coming to conventions now for, I'm so gonna age myself, but like 20 years. <laughs> I remember my first convention for Battlestar and I was, yes. <laughs> I was not prepared. I was not prepared for the love that comes from sci-fi fans. And the love that comes from Star Wars fans is unlike anything else. So. Yeah, it's, it really is a family, and y you guys just, you know, welcomed this character, and I'm, you know, so grateful. What has been the most rewarding part for your personal Star Wars journey? Oh my gosh, you know, I, I, I think taking her and seeing her from the very beginning, it's very similar to why she resonates so well with the fans, is that I, I love the growth and, and the change of this character, the way that she's morphed, um, and, um, you're in for a lot of fun surprises. Oh boy. I can't wait, guys. Season three of Mandalorian. Obviously, we are all very much looking forward to that. Thank you so much for stopping by, and thank you for your continuing work in Star Wars. We can't wait to see you in season three. Thank you, guys. And you guys, stick around. There is so much more Star Wars Celebration live.